So I talk a lot about uh, improvement and all this other stuff, looking at your games, trying to find your weaknesses. And one thing I know about myself, I've been thinking about recently, is by far the weakest part of my game compared to other people is the memorization of opening lines. I'm just bad at it, and I'm and because I'm not good at it, I kind of think I like to dismiss it as a force in the game. And um, I think a lot of times what people do is um, they dismiss the things that they're not that good at. Um, and Nietzsche has a great qu quote, um, advice was I can, he only knows what he can do. So um, uh, to that end, and as I imagine trying to make a comeback in chess, in particular as I'm nearing this magical age of 50 where I'm going to be playing in some cool tournaments, at least hopefully, like the U.S. Senior, um, I need to fix this part of my game, and especially coming up to tournaments, hopefully in the next couple months, I want to develop my opening skills. And so to that end, I had this great idea, and uh, there's this guy who's been playing on the dojo for a while. And before I even knew him, me and Kosia here at the dojo were watching his games. He was playing some games on our Discord server. And I was like, oh, this guy's at least a master, you know. And then the more I was looking at him, I was like, yeah, his openings are at least like 2,600 level. Well, I looked much later, much later, and only because Kosia told me he wasn't rated that high. And he's only a 1,700. And, you know... Uh, then I learned, you know, that he had done this, all this stuff on Chessable, and it was like really inspirational and interesting. Um, and I'd kind of been pushing it down the, the line because for one, as an old guy, like it's hard for me to adapt new technology. You know, I went to the Chessable website and it was a little bit of a forest for me. I couldn't understand it. And again, I was kind of dismissing the openings in general. So uh, then fast forward a little bit. Um, my friend Greg Shahadi was making great progress, especially in Blitz, and he was definitely also using Chessable. And so today I got a real tour, behind the scenes tour with, with this famous player, Mitch Fabian, the 1700, who I assume is gonna be 2200 once this lockdown ends. And so he gave me a tour and I just wanted to share with you a couple of the highlights that I got from it. My friends, I have hacked in to Mitch's account, and here are some of the cool things that I've found. The first is, we look at this leaderboard. What this stuff is, is a bunch of points. Basically, you get points if you review a variation. How many times did you review it? You know, that kind of thing. Pretty easy to understand. People get competitive about it. Mitch here's got basically 15 million points lifetime. It's pretty intense. That's a lot of variations that dude has gone over. We'll get into it a little bit more. But also, let's just note my friend Greg Shahada here. Look at that guy. The monster. He's also doing this. And he's somebody else I know who's been involved in this kind of uh, thing. Now, notice the points there. And I'm going to hit everyone. It just is going to explode. Look at this. And I clicked on this guy, Maestro. He's like a 78-year-old dude. Somehow lives not far from me. He lives in D.C. I'm in Baltimore. 271 million. That's a lot of, that's a lot of variations. So people are really going for it with this. And it's like turning into its own game and not just about learning openings. Though that's, of course, what interests me. Okay, here is our homepage. Not our homepage. This is Mitch's homepage. And you can see he's a legend. You can get eternal if he gets a couple more points. And these are the variations that he's covering here. 3,500 variations that he's got, he's learned. And those, of course, are his points. And one of the cool things that Mitch turned me on to about how he's doing this, uh, let's just go into this Jan Gustafsson thing. This, I think, um, is one of the more popular courses. If I were an E4, E5 player, I would definitely be all in on this. I know uh, Greg Shahad has also done this course. It's a very large course. Mitch told me some very, some uh, courses have only like 20 variations, and this thing has like thousands. So there's all kinds of things to do. And you can see Mitch has to review 11,000, <laughs> 11,000 here. And 
what it does is it's going to prompt Mitch to like, dude, you need to review it, buddy. And to give you an introduction, this is where I think Mitch really, you know, took it to the next level. Is when you look on his settings, um, you can review whole variations, randomize, or you can also just do uh, all moves or key moves. And Mitch is doing all moves. And what that means is, <laughs> this is really hectic, that Mitch goes into a, an opening and, uh, you know, every move of the opening, he has to do it three times. And it sounds psychotic, and I watched him do it a little bit, and it's like, oh, man, that's a lot of time, and it feels like kind of animal, <laughs> you know? It feels pretty animal to do it like that. But, I mean, the results speak for himself. The guy has really learned it, uh, learned some very deep opening theory um, that I think is usually very hard for anybody to process, but I think the lower rated you are, the harder it's going to be just because there's ideas and stuff that you have to remember, and he's really learning sequences of moves, which, as I said at the beginning of this video, is something that I need to learn how to do. So I think that's a key trick, that he's got all moves there and not key moves. Now, I think uh, one thing about that repetition that's really interesting that's changed in my chess lifetime is that uh, things like the woodpecker method, which really give a name to what's going on with this repetition. You see that here, that's a course that you can do here on Chessable uh, that Mitch has done some of as well. It's really a tactical patterns course, but the idea is kind of the same, that you repeat the same thing over and over again. A little bit like when you do Puzzle Rush, you're just repeating the same problem again and again. The new thing really, uh, I guess, cognitive science. And I have to admit, like if Mitch is able to do it, if that's what it is, then, you know, that's very impressive to me. Another thing about this um, chessable that I think is very interesting, and when I imagine using it, um, you know, it's, it's, it's how I imagine using it, is to create your own course. And for example, like I'm a French player and Geary's got some course on the French, but he plays the winnower. He recommends the winnower. And to me, that's not a true French player who plays the winnower. So I wouldn't want to do that, but I would want to say upload my own chess base files. And um, Mitch has done a lot of that. And just as a, a story of like how intense Mitch has got into this and, um, you know, how I can imagine really investing a lot of time in the opening is Catronius has this famous King's Indian course, five volumes. Mitch wanted to learn the King's Indian. What did he do? He manually inputted on the chess space every aspect of those books, every move. Brought it into the course, made it into a course, and then now Chessable is like, dude, you need to review it. You need to review it again and again and again. And then it turns into, you know, this whole competitive drama to get it done. Now, certainly one reason I didn't uh, get into this is because I'm frugal and kind of a cheapskate. And a lot of these courses are kind of expensive. Uh, but what Mitch turned me on to is that, first of all, to get this pro account, it's like five bucks a month, which doesn't seem extreme. Where it's extreme is you buy a course and it's like 30 bucks. And if you want to add video to that, which Mitch doesn't recommend because it's very expensive, it's, it can be in the hundreds of dollars for the video. Um, but... Whether I buy a course or not, I can create a course, and I think there's a limit on how many I can create if I'm not a pro membership. But honestly, for five bucks a month, if I was really into it, I could imagine doing that. So, um, in conclusion, will Jesse do this? Kind of an interesting question, but I think one thing I know about myself is that if I don't do it, it's because I'm refusing to acknowledge the weakest part of my game. I'm refusing to admit that it's a really significant part of the game and that this is the future of what's going on. And if an old guy like Greg Shahada, he's not as old as I am, but if an old guy like Greg Shahada gets on here and can learn an opening, then that's a good enough uh, motivation for me, inspiration, as well as Mitch. Right, who's really taken a 1700 and made him into, I think, a 2600 level opening player. And I say that with all honesty. I've, I've no many GMs, actually, most GMs I know do not have his level of opening knowledge. All right, will Jesse do it? We'll see. Bye bye.